In this episode I'm going to talk about uh, CPM commands. I already have a simulation started with CPM version 2.2. This is a simulation using an uh, Intel 8080 CPU. And uh, we'll take a look now at uh, the commands available by default in uh, this operating system. First, uh, CPM has a number of uh, six internal commands, uh, sometimes these are called resident commands. So I will start with uh, these ones. The first command allows us to change the disk. For example, if I type A uh, followed by two dots, uh, colon sign, uh, I change the drive letter to A. Uh, however, this was already selected. I can type, for example, B. However, I don't have a disk in the B drive, so it just shows this error. If I uh, type Enter a couple of times, uh, it uh, changes the drive to B, but if I try to run any other command uh, on this drive, it will again show the error. I will move back to the A drive. Uh, the second command, uh, the second internal command, uh, is uh, dir. This uh, allows us to see the contents of uh, the disk in the currently selected drive. Uh, we can also specify a disk, for example, dir a uh, colon. Uh, and we can also use uh, some patterns. For example, if I only want to see uh, executable files, these are files ending with uh, com extension, I can uh, type dir star.com. Uh, on the other hand, maybe I want to see uh, files that have three letters and the com extension. So I can use uh, question mark for any letter or star for uh, any group of letters. Uh, the next command is uh, type, uh, which allows us to see uh, the contents of a file. Uh, it should be a text file. I already created here a test.txt file. So if I uh, write the command type and this file name, I get to see the contents of this file. The next command is uh, era. This is the short for erase. So I can uh, erase, uh, for example, this test.txt file. Uh, please notice that uh, the error command doesn't prompt me if I'm sure I want to delete it, so um, please be careful with uh, this command. It's also possible uh, to erase, uh, for example, all uh, txt files. Okay, so now if I type dir, uh, there is no txt file available. Uh, and uh, again, the command uh, did not prompt if uh, I really want to do this. It's also possible to delete all the files on the disk. However, in this case, uh, it prompts and asks if I really want to do this. So I will type no. Uh, also, uh, you should note that by default uh, there is no unerase or undelete command, so uh, you should really be careful with uh, this erase command. Now, the next command is uh, ran, which allows us to rename a file. So, for example, I want to rename uh, bios.asm and I want, to, I want it to be called uh, bios dot all uh, equals uh, bios dot asm so in this case i'm uh, entering the command ran followed by the new name equals the old name so if i run dir again i see the file was renamed uh, now i will rename it back uh, bios uh, bios 
dot sm equals bios dot old so it's back to how it was originally called uh, the next internal command is uh, save uh, however I can't really demonstrate this uh, it's used to save a number of uh, pages from uh, memory uh, to a file on disk so this is useful if you uh, enter a program in uh, memory or maybe you want to save something from the memory uh, I can for example say save uh, let's say one pages of memory uh, to a file called uh, test.sav so if I type a dir uh, I see uh, the first case I just entered save so it created a file with an empty name so this is quite weird actually and then uh, in the second case uh, I got this uh, test sav uh, file uh, the next internal command and the final internal command is user uh, which allows selecting a user area by default we are in user area 0 and we can switch to a new user area for example user 1 and uh, here we see uh, there are no files I previously created a video about user areas uh, there are quite a lot of things to say about this user area so if you are interested please uh, watch uh, that video after this one I will not go into details now I'm going back to user area 0 and now I can see again the files so this completed the internal commands or resident commands uh, these are always available to the user and uh, CPM comes with a number of uh, transient commands these are actually just executable files uh, you can see them here if I type dear star.com uh, so these are the executable files uh, on this particular uh, system disk I have 11 transient commands uh, on uh, different disks you may have a different number of transient commands and this is because uh, computer manufacturers that license the CPM uh, they usually include additional uh, commands that are specific to the computer architecture so these are just the default commands uh, that were released by digital research uh, with the CPM uh, operating system so the most important command is pip uh, this is uh, similar to a copy command from uh, other operating systems uh, as you can see there is no actual uh, command uh, named copy but instead there is this uh, pip the format for uh, pip is uh, destination equals source so it's similar to the rename command so if I want uh, to copy uh, bios.asm to something like bios.back from backup uh, I would just say uh, pip bios.back equals uh, bios.asm and uh, I have it uh, copied uh, I can see it here uh, also one thing to note uh, the rename command uh, only acts on a single drive so you cannot rename a file from one drive to the other similar to moving it uh, however pip uh, acts uh, either on a single drive as you saw here or uh, on uh, multiple drives so you can copy from one drive to another also with uh, pip you can do uh, quite a lot of things uh, for example I can uh, create a file uh, let's call it test.txt equals uh, con uh, column so in this case uh, what happens is that uh, people will copy uh, two uh, 
uh, test.txt uh, from the console device, so in this case from this uh, terminal simulation. So I can enter here uh, some text like uh, this is uh, test.txt and I can finish the input with control Z. Uh, and uh, this is the end of file. So now if I take a look, I see here test.txt, uh, I can type it, type test.txt, and I see uh, the input. But uh, instead of type, I can also use pip con colon equals uh, test.txt. So in this case, uh, the file test.txt gets copied to the console device, and this is uh, similar to the type command. And uh, you can do lots of things with uh, PIP, but uh, I will move on now and uh, maybe in the future I will create a video dedicated to the PIP command. Uh, next we have a series of commands, uh, move CPM and sysgen. Uh, these are usually used uh, together. Uh, maybe you remember in the beginning you saw um, uh, that this is CPM uh, 20k version, so it's a CPM that runs in 20 kilobytes of memory, but usually uh, you will have more memory available. Uh, this simulation has 64 kilobytes of memory available, uh, however some of the memory is reserved to ROM. Uh, so, uh, if we run move CPM, uh, it will detect how much uh, RAM memory is available. And uh, actually, it does this by testing uh, different memory addresses until uh, it notices that it cannot write to a particular memory address. Uh, and actually, in the console here or here, you see that it tried to write at memory address uh, F800 in hexadecimal and this actually corresponds to ROM. So now it uh, detected it cannot access it, so uh, it uh, found out that we have 62 kilobytes of uh, RAM available. So it relocated uh, CPM components uh, so that uh, now we can use uh, up to 62 kilobytes of memory. Uh, and uh, with uh, sysgen, uh, it's possible to generate a new uh, system disk uh, that uh, boots with uh, this size of memory. Uh, however, I will not generate one now, but I can demonstrate how the sysgen works. Uh, so it requests a source drive name or return to skip, a return in this case uh, means that it will uh, use an operating system left in memory by move CPM and the destination drive uh, which can be A or B or uh, some drive that's available to the simulation uh, but in this case I will simply press return which will exit uh, sysgen. Again this is something that uh, probably needs a dedicated video uh, to understand how to properly generate a system. So let's move on. Uh, the next uh, extremely important command is uh, start. So this command uh, has a number of parameters in its default form, uh, simply displays uh, the space available on uh, the different uh, disks that are available in the simulation. Uh, we can also find out more information about a particular uh, disk. So we see here the drive characteristics of the A drive uh, and uh, we see uh, it has the standard 128 byte uh, records and so on, we see drive capacity, directory entries, and so on. Uh, but it's also possible to see information about files. 
So now we get a list of files uh, and we see uh, how many records are uh, used by a file and how many bytes. And also uh, these files are read-write and they are uh, regular files. With start we can also change uh, and for example set uh, test.txt uh, to be uh, read only. So this is the format for setting a file to read only. Okay, uh, now if we run dir, uh, we see test.txt uh, here, uh, there is no change. However, if uh, again we run start, uh, we see test.txt is the only uh, read-only file. So in this case, we cannot uh, delete it. So it says uh, there is an error and uh, the file is read-only. Uh, uh, the erase command uh, cannot delete it. But uh, in addition, we can also uh, set start uh, uh, again on test.txt uh, uh, we can set a system attribute uh, this is dollar sign sys okay so now if we type dir uh, we see uh, that, uh, that test.txt is no longer available here in the dir output because now it is set uh, to be a system file and basically this is the main thing that happens, uh, it's no longer shown in the dir listing. We see it here in uh, start, uh, it's placed between parentheses, uh, but even though it's not visible in dir, uh, we can still uh, access it, for example, type, and yeah, the file is there, the content is there. And now with start, we can uh, set it back test.txt uh, with the attribute dollar, uh, dollar sign d and now it's again available in the dir output now the next uh, command is uh, load uh, this uh, sometimes uh, work uh, works in uh, tandem with uh, save or uh, with uh, dump for example uh, load uh, allows uh, loading a hex file in memory uh, starting at address uh, 100 so this is uh, useful for uh, transforming a hex file into a com file load will actually uh, produce a com file. Uh, with uh, dump, for example, we can um, uh, generate a hex file from a com file. Uh, I have uh, several videos about working with hex files, so I will not go into details at this moment. But please uh, check them out if you are interested in working with hex files. Uh, the next command is ddt. Uh, this is uh, the debugger. Again, uh, I'm not going to show how to debug a program, but it allows loading a com file, an executable file into memory, and then you can uh, debug it or uh, even change it with uh, proper instructions for the CPU. Uh, then uh, we have uh, ASM, this is uh, an assembler, so if you have uh, AS assembly source files you can assemble them using ASM. Uh, again, I will not go into detail, uh, you need to know assembly language. Uh, then uh, we have ED, uh, this is uh, the default editor. I will uh, start it with ED, uh, let's say test2.txt. 
However, it's not like uh, any editor that you are probably used to it. Uh, it starts in this mode. Uh, here it expects a command. Uh, I'll just show a couple of commands. For example, I uh, stands for insert. Uh, and now we can write uh, the lines uh, associated with this file. Let's say this is test2. Uh, this is line 2, line 3, uh, and then we can end the file with control Z. And now we are back to the editor interface. Uh, we can type something like 1 to 100T. This means display lines from 1 to 100. Uh, obviously, we don't have 100 lines. Now we can see the text. There are commands for appending, for removing lines, inserting lines, and so on. And I will just type Q, uh, which will quit uh, the editor. And uh, we see our uh, text file there. If I type doesn't contain anything. Why? Because we do not uh, save the file. So the editor will not save it automatically. Uh, you need to enter a proper command uh, to save it. And finally, uh, the last two commands are submit and xsub. Uh, submit is uh, useful for command batching, similar to bat files. Uh, MS-DOS. Uh, so these are just files that combine uh, multiple commands. Uh, XSub is uh, useful inside uh, such a batch file. Uh, it allows uh, redirecting uh, the input uh, instead of uh, console. It is redirected and input is actually read from within uh, the batch files. So this is useful for sending commands to something like uh, ED or uh, DDT or some other utilities. Uh, again, this is something that I will not uh, demonstrate at this moment as it probably requires its own video to properly understand the batching in CPM. And uh, this concludes the commands that are by default available in this version of CPM. However, uh, as you can see, any uh, executable file uh, can become a command. Uh, and uh, you don't need uh, to enter the file extension. So in this case, uh, I can either say stat.com or just stat. Uh, to, uh, actually, I have to omit the uh, extension in order to have it run, as you can see here. So, uh, from this point of view, there is uh, no obvious difference uh, between an internal command and an external command. Uh, the only difference is that uh, external commands or transient commands uh, cannot be executed if uh, they are not present on the currently selected uh, drive. I can, however, prepend the drive. But in any case, uh, the disk containing the command uh, needs to be uh, inserted into one of the uh, computer drives. Otherwise, uh, it's not possible to execute it. However, if we change uh, the disk and insert a disk with different files, then uh, these executable files also uh, can be thought of as commands. However, the default commands are those that we covered uh, today. Okay, so um, thank you for watching. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and see you next time with more interesting videos. Bye!